So, welcome back to Kitchen Table Conversations. Great name. I want to talk about um, a very common feeling that I see a lot of people experience in the ER. Busy lives, so much stuff going on, and a lot of times we feel like, God, the last thing we can do is add one more thing to our plate, like 30 more minutes of exercise or food prep of eating, cooking vegetables, and you know, it's just, and it can be, and this is the feeling, overwhelming. That feeling of overwhelming, it's like the worst feeling because it's a combination of their, so, so like, let's decode it a little bit. Like what does it mean? What does that feeling overwhelmed mean? It's actually a, an emotion that signals something to you when you feel it. What I think it means, tell me what you think it means, is it's a signal that says this is too much. I am one person. I can only do so many things, even if you're Wonder Woman or Superman. There's there's limits to what each of us can do, and I think a lot of us live on that edge. We like to push it to our natural limits. And so this feeling of overwhelmed is actually a very useful signal that says, hey, maybe that's too, hey, that's too much. That's more than I can do. It's a very, for me, I don't like that feeling. It's a very uncomfortable feeling because it often feels like um, I can't do it. Maybe, and it maybe touches the shame of I'm not good. If I were good enough, I'd be able to handle all this stuff, kind of like these lies of shame. Um, very uncomfortable feeling. Uh, and it often leaves me paralyzed where I end up doing nothing. It's got so many things going on, so many things to do. And I end up doing none of them, overwhelmed. Oh, I hate that feeling. What is the antidote to that feeling? Like, what's, What do you do for that? When you're overwhelmed, what do you do? I think the antidote to that is you stop and you say, you acknowledge the reality, which is I can't do everything. I can't do it all. What an amazing feeling that is. And from that, you could start to say no when you have to say no. Um, but also in that moment, and this happens in the ER to me all the time, where there's a ton of people in the waiting room. I really want to take care of everybody and do my best. And there are moments when I'm like, I cannot do all of this. I can't call in sick. I can't quit. You know, I got to figure it out. And, and so what do I do? You know, I remind myself that what I can do is one thing at a time one step at a time. I can do my best with this person, with this individual person and this patient and their case. I can do my best thinking about reviewing all of their results and putting it together what the best plan is and all that stuff. But I can do one thing at a time. And in the ER, that has to be one thing at a time with who is most sick and most life-threatening or whatever. And that dictates my course of action and how I get through that. And, and once I kind of get back to that one step at a time thing, while realizing I can't do it all, that overwhelmed feeling goes away. That signal, which exactly says that, hey, need you to acknowledge you can't do it all. And I can let that go and then do one thing at a time. So, so I have patients all the time that come in and they have busy lives and they have kids and a job and all this stuff. And man, I want to like get in there and help them to live a healthier, better lifestyle, to eat better, to make better choices, to exercise. And they often feel overwhelmed, you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't change my whole life, whatever. So then I say, okay, so the, the counter to that, the antidote to that, it's the same thing as I said before, one step at a time. You can't do it all at once. Some people like to do, you know, these huge chunks, change their whole life and all that stuff. Great. But for most of us, you know, what is the next best step? What is something you can do? If you're not exercising, maybe taking a walk 15 minutes a day, or if that's too much, 15 minutes three times a week. Or hell, just do one. 15 minutes once a day. The crazy thing is if you go from not exercising at all to just walking 15 minutes a day consistently, you can live three years longer. Three, isn't that crazy? So it matters. You know, taking these little steps, doing what you can, one thing at a time, that's the way that you counter being overwhelmed. Same thing with diet. Maybe you're not in a place where you can totally redo your entire diet and fit it all together. 
maybe a step up for you is you're not eating breakfast, so now you eat a little protein bar. Or now you grab a, you know, a thing of yogurt and an apple. Great. That's the next step. You can do that. You can fight back that overwhelmed and, and um, one step at a time. And that, that is such a key behavior approach. You know, remember that in the future. Let's future pace, the forward pace this, where you know, you're gonna get overwhelmed again in the future. Pause, acknowledge that this is a, a very helpful signal that tells you to remember you can only do one thing at a time and to focus on that next most important thing. That's how you get out, out of it. That's how you let go of that overwhelmed feeling and, and get back to it. So there you go, that's, um, and there's plenty of applications to health for that. How, how do you get overwhelmed with your health? Thinking of too many things to get back, what is the next best step for you getting healthier? Hope you've enjoyed these kitchen table conversations. Uh, What's my sign off? Take care of yourself. See you next time.